Hello and welcome to the only show that is more Wookiees than a police academy filled with speech impediments. I'm Max. <laughs> I'm Matt. And I'm Luke. And this is Force for Thought. And Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, Happy New Year. Uh, new Year, new us. New. This is the second video of the year, right? Yeah, we had our uh, <laughs> we had our Rogue One drop yesterday. Luke did an excellent job breaking down uh, Star Wars Legacy. Go give that a listen if you haven't already. And this is our first. I guess mainline episode. I don't know what we call these. Yeah, let's get the music going now, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can edit the music wherever you want. <laughs> I thought it was right. I thought it was going to be after Happy New Year. <laughs> yes. Or no, you said Happy New Year, everybody, didn't It'll you? It'll probably be in the and most insulting Year, spot yeah. for us personally. <laughs> I know. Oh, we're I have off to guess. We're off to such a great start. It's probably going to be voiced over this whole part. It's probably going to play for like 15 seconds. I'll just loop it starting over now. Because Matt always has to edit us to make us look bad. Such as my Bib Fortuna bit, which... <laughs> bib for, we, all, we all agreed on my Bib Fortuna bit, which has been getting a lot of buzz. That was that was not a vindictive act by Matt. It was pretty unanimous it was, that it needed to be toned down. Yeah, so yeah. I guess we should address the Bib Fortuna a little bit beforehand. This is, could be the shoot the ship a little bit too. Yeah, it was the only the only topic I had for shoot the ship because I really wanted to start it on this podcast first the hashtag release the bib cut yeah there's been a lot of people talking about it yeah we're, we, you know it's a uh, it's starting it's uh, still a very uh, I don't know low level movement but we're it's building not, it's not release the Snyder cut level yet not yet but that's the goal I'm trying to get release the bib cut to the yeah. level of release the Snyder cut mm -hmm. so that it has the exact same reaction where we finally do release it and everyone's mm -hmm. just kind of like <laughs> and to be fair I'm the one who always says we need to save these episodes for when one of us die we can do <laughs> we can do a, a clip <laughs> show but you want to delete them so in, in if we ever deleted them the bib cut would never be so you're your and you're your own enemy of, in this situa situation that's interesting can I get it on some sort of uh, obsolete form of media like a floppy disk yeah. or something you know what we should do we should just release a limited edition bib cut vinyl of just the 27 minute rant about bib fortuna well, once we once we start a patreon that'll be our only patreon exclusive <laughs> that would be really funny actually the vinyl of uh, the bib cut let us know everybody if this is the first time you're hearing the bib cut please go back and listen to uh what episode was that on that's on the han solo comment yeah. the han yeah. solo man it's gonna be an infamous episode now Wait, with this with these extra segments it Makes sense, but just the title, Han Solo Comic Review, and now knowing in hindsight, that's also the 27-minute tangent that Max went on about Bib Fortuna. But you know what's funny, too, is that that, was just, that is a new segment we're trying out. <laughs> So there might be... The idea of a character spotlight is fantastic. It was yes. the execution. It was a little flawed. Um, yeah, during that, I think we talked about it, but Luke and I were just looking back and forth like, are we going to get a word in edgewise about Bib Fortuna? Or do you I thought some... we were getting punked. I, so well, the thing I. is, as I was going, <laughs> I could like see you guys in my peripherals kind of like look at each other, and I'm like, oh, this is going a little too long. And then I saw that I had like six more pages to go, and I'm like, oh, my... oh boy. Well, it's like it was like... <laughs> This was like seeing a school presentation for a kid who's never uh, spoke publicly before, just looking straight at the phone, reading str like line for line, not making any eye contact with us. We were like, well, is he going to look at us at least to get like some sort of cue to be like, hurry up. I had to keep going. I couldn't lose my space because I had it all like saved on screenshots on my phone. So I'm like also swiping back and forth. So every swipe, I'm like trying to get my spot back on the page. Oh, uh, yikes. My God. What a mess, Maxwell. Yeah we, yeah, we saved it. We saved it in the edit. Yeah. Matt's, Matt's favorite phrase of all time is we'll fix it in post. So <laughs> 2024 will not have any of these embarrassing mishaps. I promise. <laughs> we, we already, already edited. It. Well, no, starting now. <laughs> all right. Starting now. I wanna, uh, yeah, I wanna, our intro today was not great. I want to re-put the music in right now. <laughs> Just <to> restart it. <laughs> You know, the Forest for Thought fiscal year technically starts on May the 4th, so... That's true. <laughs> that's true. That's when we fiscal started. Fiscal year? I don't think that's what a fiscal year is, but that's what that's our year. That's... Yes. Oh, that is too what a fiscal year is. It's just a made-up starting point for your year. <laughs> it's not made up. It's no. made up. Oh, boy. All right. Well, anyways, let's talk about a little bit of Star Wars in the news. Um... Again, the oh purpose boy, of this segment isn't to break news, so all of this has kind of been out for a while. I just wanted to add a little bit of commentary to it, uh, such as a new Mace Windu book being announced. Ooh. 
The what? cover is really cool. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I like I, art. I, Mace I, Windu looks cool. Yeah, I have no. We, we talked about this before. Same thing with the comic uh, that's coming out too. It's like, well, just more Mace Windu yes. content. Yes, and that's why I wanted to talk about it actually, because we have sure. a Mace Windu comic coming out in February, and then this I think is coming out in August. Maybe it's called Mace Windu: The Glass Abyss, which. I feel like is an interesting title, and I wanted to know what your guys' thoughts were because to me, mm-hmm. it seemed like it might be setting up for like a Mace Windu trilogy. The fact that it's called Mace Windu: The Glass Abyss and not just yeah. The Glass Abyss. That's such a Phantom Menace name. The Glass Abyss. What is that? Yeah, it does sound cool. But when we talked about the Mace Windu comic, our over well, I guess maybe I'm imposing my own views on it now. My overwhelming opinion is that we do not need more Mace Windu stories, and I would rather have. It's. Kit Fisto. It's a hard thing to say literally any other Star Wars character besides Mace Windu, but I think it might be literally yeah. any other Star Wars character than Mace Windu. He's just I'd rather have books and comics about him. And now we're getting a book and a comic in the same year, and I don't want it. I think, Anything else, please. And I, I think there's a yeah. reason for it, though. And mm-hmm. I think it's because Lucasfilm has plays their cards pretty close to their chest because I have a feeling that a lot of creators come to them and they're like, hey, I have an idea for a story. Can we do this? And they're like, ah, we don't know what we're going to do with that character yet. So why don't you hold off on that? And I feel like the fact that there's like giving the go ahead to do a book and a comic is a signal from Lucasfilm that we're not going to see Mace Windu again. I think I'm the only one who really wants that. <laughs> but like at first I was like, oh, that'd be like really cool to see Mace Windu post revenge. Like maybe he survives. Uh, and I kind of thought in the back of my head, maybe we would get like a special like uh, appearance of him in the Bad Batch or something like that. But I think with this news, I'm interpreting it as Lucasfilm is saying, you guys can do what you want with this character. You've seen everything we have to offer from our end. I think it makes sense, too. I also, I mean, I think you can read it as a lead up to a return of him in some sort, though. I don't think it's going to happen. But I can, thought about you read that, like but I just though? don't think that they're in that much yeah. cahoots with each other. I don't think the left hand's talking to the right hand that much. Yeah. I wish it was, but like even like the Aftermath books and stuff, like everyone kind of thought that that was going to be a lot more significant to the sequel trilogy than mm, yeah. it was, which was not really at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just about to say the same thing. You're thinking like a 2016 Star Wars fan back when we thought the yeah. book would have significant tie-ins to yeah. movies yeah. and TV shows, and they just don't. But, hey, maybe they're turning a leaf. Maybe with Dave's new promotion, the chief creative officer, this is uh, an initiative that he's doing. Maybe this is building up to uh, Mace Windu post-Revenge of the Sith. Who knows? I guess that's fair. I never thought about how chief creative officer would encompass books and comics also. Yeah, and he does presumably like Mace Windu, right? I mean, he's in... I think he likes all the Jedi, so yeah. yeah. I think it, Mace Windu is one of those things that he's very familiar, obviously, because he's been around, especially for people that, you know, grew up with the prequels, you know, for all of us, he's very familiar. And obviously, same thing with Clone Wars and everything. So I feel like he is like a familiar face that is like a calming presence even though he's like a complete dick in most of the ip and i feel like <laughs> that's the thing about him is that he's never really explored we he's very surface level um i feel like versus being able to dive into that character a little bit more and i feel like he's we usually see him in the jedi council versus like what is he like outside of that um but i don't know would you listen if it was the uh clone wars voice actor for mace windu mm. or does it have to be sam I don't want to put this ultimatum on Disney because the fact of the matter is I don't want to <laughs> read this They're listening right now. They're listening to the pod going, hold on, hold on. What's if he going to say? If it's Sam Jackson, I will read because I like Sam Jackson. I don't like the voice. I don't know the voice actor's name off the top of my head. And it would just be like I'm just reading a Mace Windu book if it's the voice actor. So, no, I will not. Did Interesting. We, did we, we talked about GalaxyCon a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, talking about voice actors. Do we talk about on pod how the guy who's selling the lightsaber, try to not try to convince us, but thought that Obi-Wan, not Obi-Wan, that Ian McGregor and Alec Guinness signed the same lightsaber? No, a couple weeks ago when we talked about Galaxy Con, that's what Matt's talking about. Uh, we, when we were at Galaxy Con, there was a lightsaber booth, and this guy was trying to sell us this really special lightsaber that he claimed was signed by both Ian McGregor and Alec Guinness, and yeah, we were immediately like... No. No, it's not. <laughs> and he showed it to us, and we were looking at it, and we, we couldn't really make out what it said. It was signed and we were by like, two people, but yeah. you know how signatures are. There were just two scribbles. And you can kind of make out Ewan McGregor like when you know that you were looking for that. But we were looking for Alec Guinness, and we were looking at it, and we were like, that's not what that says. Yeah. And, I, and eventually I was like, there's like three names there. I was like, this is the voice actor yes. for Obi-Wan from The Clone Wars. So and he looked at it, and he was like, oh, yeah, James Arnold Taylor. And we were like, that's a huge difference. Like, huge. I would... 
I would sue somebody if they tried telling me that was Alec Guinness's <laughs> yeah. signature on that lightsaber. But also, I forget what he was selling it for. It was crazy expensive. But if it was Ewan McGregor and Alec Guinness, that thing would have been worth, I mean, like it a priceless. million dollars. Yeah. yeah. But also, the, the, those lightsabers, A, I think look a little bit baby, a little bit tiny, not to diss that booth. But then also, <laughs> um, the, the case, is like, oh, that's, it's, it's, it's authentic. It's like, a, what, it's like a certified authenticity. I was like, from who? Like I didn't just like I still don't believe this. Like mm-hmm. it's just, like you you said you made the plate. That doesn't mean anything to me anyway. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Um, I had a Star Wars thought in the real world, uh, which we're still in the in the news section. Which this isn't Star Wars news, but uh, in the basketball world, this player got like sixty or seventy points in a game and wanted the game ball. But mm-hmm. a player on the other side made his first NBA basket, and they typically get the game ball. Yeah, and then they fought about who gets the game ball. And the star that got all these points is like, yeah, I don't know if I got the actual game ball or not, or if they just gave me a ball. And it just got me thinking, like, what's it matter? What's it matter to any of this? <laughs> it's true. a ball, bro. And then it made me think about Star Wars and the certified authentic and, like, on-screen props and stuff. And it's like, what does any of this matter? It makes me want to get into the fake memorabilia scam business. <laughs> I can print a picture of Yoda, scribble on it, and be like, oh, it's signed by Frank Oz. There you go, Max. But Happy birthday. Right, you, well, and this, you would never know until the day you die. This is, this is going to play real well at your trial. And this is, yeah. And also, when you see <laughs> the Force for Thought store and we have signed Yoda pictures, those are real. <laughs> <laughs> just says, it's not even in cursive. It just says Luke. <laughs> <laughs> you should start selling things like that. Frank Oz and I are actually really good friends, and he sends me autographed stuff all the time. <laughs> Oh, gosh, that's funny. All right. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was Adam Driver's recent comments on Kylo Ren. I don't know if you guys saw this. He's promoting a movie right now called Ferrari. Do you know yeah, that movie? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. Ferrari? Yeah. yeah. I worked on it a little bit. Did you? Mm-hmm. I was wondering. Um, so anyway, he's doing his uh, he's doing his circuits right now, and somebody asked him about playing Kylo Ren, and he said in an interview that basically when he signed on to do Kylo Ren, there was no plan for him to become Ben Solo. There was no redemption, and it was J.J.'s original idea to have the opposite story arc as Darth Vader, where Darth Vader started mm-hmm. like fully committed to the dark side and resolution loot and by the end of the trilogy Darth Vader was kind of wavering and leading a little more towards the light Kylo Ren would be the exact opposite where he's kind of struggling with the light side at the beginning of the trilogy and then by the end he would be completely like committed to the dark side and I think that's cool but like a lot of people I think are blowing these comments up a little bit more than they need to being like oh this is just like confirms that Disney had no idea what they were doing and stuff like that and first off I want to just kind of provide counterpoint to that which is we don't need further proof of that everybody kind of knows coming from three people who like the sequels more than most other people do Mm. we recognize that there wasn't a very well thought out plan for the sequels but i do think that this speaks a little bit better of ryan johnson because everyone always tries to crap on the last jedi the most Mm. uh and then in the interview he even says that ryan johnson's version was a little bit different than what jj um uh, whatever anticipated but that it still fit for the character and that the major character change didn't come until the rise of skywalker so i was like there you go justice for the last jedi because as everybody knows that is the force for thoughts uh number one ranked star wars movie Mm -hmm. uh, which i think is pretty unanimously agreed upon too actually we, we haven't gotten any flack for that at all so that's that's pretty great yeah uh i don't want to poo poo on your idea for star wars in the news as a segment but this is now two for two when you bring up not news this is this is not news this is not interesting <laughs> that's i roll I, my I eyes seeing it. it on the internet and now i have to actually report i mean I'm, I'm not reporting on it but just being privy to this whole conversation on a podcast that I'm a co-host of We're not bothers reporting me. it. This is stupid. This is no, not it's, news. It's but it's in Star Wars in the news. It's not Star Wars news. It's just it's interesting, it's interesting to talk about cuz I, I agree cuz I think like it's interesting that he's still talking about this years later now. Um, well, it's not like to be he's fair, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I think someone asked him. I That's don't think true. he wants to. I think That's he'll true. be asked about it every year for the rest of his life. That, that is fair. <laughs> but, yeah, he was I, also I just on SNL, too, and he was making Star Wars jokes. They, uh, it's apparently a great episode. He's always so funny when he's on there, too. And Liv Rod um, was the musical guest. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is that what people call Olivia Rodrigo? No, that's what Matt <laughs> calls her because I called her Liv Rod and my wife made fun of me. <laughs> she said, no one calls her that except Matt. Shout out like, to <laughs> Tim Kale Packus for starting that. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. He, he calls her Liv Rod. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
I think that's cool. I'd rather see Kylo Ren, I think, be um, fully bad. I think that's an interesting idea, but we'll never see it, so. And oh, what well. we got was cool. Like we, yeah. the, the redemption, although it may have been rather expected, it was awesome seeing Han Solo back and the way they yes. intercut that memory of Han Solo with the I know what I have to do, but I don't know if they have the strength to do it line. Yeah. That, was, that was all cool. Mm-hmm. What else you got, Maxwell? A clarification. Again, Luke, Is it gonna be we're not reporting Uh-oh. the news. We're just commenting on it. Because I agree. That's not What's news. What's the difference? There's no, there, that, that interview didn't tell us anything we didn't know before. I just wanted to add a little plug of like, hey, stop hating on The Last Jedi so Yeah, much. like Max's uh, point to uh, talking about how Last Jedi, uh, you know, I think helps that. That Last Jedi was actually more in line than anybody else thought. I will never, never, perspective. I will never defend going the last Jedi any report, chance I get. We're never going to be reporting the news. We're not reporters. Oh, yeah. And by the way, this is recorded three weeks before you're listening to it. <laughs> yeah, <that too. laughs> Something crazy happened in the last three weeks, and they're like, why are they not talking about this? Probably uh, freaking John why. Boyega was asked about Star Wars, and he was like, oh, yeah, there actually wasn't that much of a plan. It's going to be blasted all over the news <laughs> like it's brand new information. <laughs> All right, well, here's here's some... I guess this isn't brand new either. This was announced a little while ago, but interesting nonetheless. The Mandalorian Seasons 1 and 2 are being released on Blu-ray and 4K Ultra HD disc, a physical copy, and mm-hmm. that's uh, that's kind of actually shocking from Disney Plus's yeah. plan. We talked about this a little bit, I think, before, too, and it's the only reason... Which we'll, we're going to talk about later in this episode, but the only reason I would imagine they would do Seasons 1 and 2 is so they could release 3 and 4 together. Would be another idea, right? Are because they actually it, releasing like seasons one and two as a as a set of one and are, two, or no? They're separate. They're separate. There's, oh yeah. man, see, I always what's love, it called like steel book cases yeah. or whatever. They're they're separate one and two. I assume there's no special features on it besides what's on Disney Plus. No, it says actually there's going to be all new, never oh. seen featurettes or whatever. They well, started stay removing tuned. featurettes from Star Wars on Disney Plus. Also, what um, the the Last Jedi? I think it's called the the. I don't know what the feature it is called the making it, of or whatever it was like a full-length documentary mm-hmm. almost i remember watching it on the dvd when i had the last jedi and then seeing it that it was on disney plus and i saw online people are complaining that it was taken down that's the, the streaming is all mm. and we, this is a whole separate tangent i don't really want to go on but like it's streaming is all upside down currently because it was so segmented and so nice where you want to get anything that's batman you go to hbo Right, because that Warner Brothers and they own that. Um, but now it's like, oh no, Batman is now, now going to be on Amazon Prime with the new Batman Cape Crusader series. Merry Little Batman. If you're looking for a great uh, Christmas movie, there's a new animated Batman uh, called Merry Little Batman. It's absolutely hilarious. It's a great little kids movie, um, but it's fantastic. David Hornsby, who plays uh, Cricket and Sonny, is the Joker in it. Um, it's really good. But like, it's so confusing now. We're like. Things are getting taken off. HBO shows are on Netflix now again, and it's like it do, mm-hmm. do, nothing it makes sense. And with that being said, I'm down for more physical media release. I think that's really cool. Best Buy, it seems like maybe stop they stopped production on their Best Buy physical or their physical sales maybe at the wrong moment in time. Um, but Best yeah, Buy is not selling physical sales no. anymore. No, of anything for DVDs or movies and TV shows specifically. I really think games. Really, don't. I did not know that. Yeah. But, like, I'm excited for that. I'm sure the art will be cool, and I like when they do variants on that. So, yeah, that's going to be super exciting. God, it's crazy how little I know about anything. Like, how does Best Buy work such that it's better for them to just not put this in the store? Like, are they going to put something else at that spot that, like, was it taking up too much space in their stores? Their stores are massive. Action figures. I've seen Star Wars action figures in there now. Well, that's the thing. They're going to become a GameStop where it's just they have to most of their... that's a great business model. Yes, it's just Funko Pops is their business (laughs) model now. Interesting. I uh, always remember the when I bought uh, the Force Awakens on Blu-ray. Matt and I were really excited because we were like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go home. We're gonna watch all the special features all night, and it's gonna be great." <laughs> well, because there was the there was the table read. That was what we were excited yes, for. That's right. It was the table read, and we thought it was gonna be an actual table read of like the entire movie. And we were like, "That's gonna be so cool. I want to listen to that." We were. I cannot tell you how excited we were. We told at the time, our wives now, our girlfriends at the time, that we were going to do this So all day. Like, no one was talking to us. I think we bought, like, snacks and, and drinks, and we're just like, we're going to watch the movie, and then we're going to have, like, an, an additional four hours or so. Because mm-hmm. we'll get the movies two hours. The read has to be two hours. Right. Anyway, Max, we'll continue. No, it was like a, a montage. It was like two minutes long. Yep. It was one of the most disappointing things. <laughs> it's, if we both sat there, we hit play, and we were like, oh, that wasn't just an intro montage. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, too. We thought it was going to start after it ended. We were like, okay, let's do it. I was like, oh, now we're back at the main menu. (laughs) Anyway, the day was 
kind of ruined. <laughs> and now I'm ready to be hurt again by Mandalorian seasons one and two. Because yep. you know I'm going to buy them. I'm going to watch the featurettes and I'm going to report on this podcast that it was not worth the money. But no, I'm going to do it anyway. We'll do a full episode on those featurettes. I'm excited about <laughs> it. Stay tuned. Um, and then the last thing I had on here, uh, I think, Matt, you wanted to talk about this. It was that uh, entertainment article or no Yahoo. I don't know. It might have been multiple, <laughs> multiple sources. Um, <laughs> Yahoo. There's an article saying all the Marvel and Star Wars shows coming to Disney Plus in 2024. And the only things that they have listed are Skeleton Crew and Acolyte. Yeah. I, it's just weird. Um, you know, Star Wars is always in a weird holding pattern with releasing things or being pre to emptively releasing things like we've talked about. And so I almost feel like they're doing the opposite of being like, okay, we're not going to promise anything now. Like, right, it's like, oh, look, we're going to have this Guillermo, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro Jabba the Hutt movie. And then, the, we were, like, look, we, we talked about this during the Solo review when there were, like, all these different Solo kind of mm-hmm. one-off movies. Um, they announced and then all of a sudden scrapped the same thing. I think we you can no longer get excited for what they are announcing, so I feel like there's some sort of hiccup and they're going to announce them when they're officially, like, done and locked. Like, Bad Batch. There was clearly a hiccup in season two with the mixing, right? Maybe. Because then it got pushed by like a like two months. And so I feel like people are like, oh, well, they're in their final mixes now. But it's like, I think that's what happened when, when season two was going on. And they got delayed. So I feel like they're like, we're not going to give a solidified date. Once it's in the can and locked, we'll, we will let you know. I wonder if that's a Dave Filoni thing, now that he's higher up. It because definitely could be. Give that man a raise if it is, because not to beat a dead horse here, but we talk about that on the pod all the time. Star Wars, Lucasfilm, stop announcing things until you have concrete plans. Yep. I just rewatched the Eclipse Star Wars game trailer. I was like, God damn, this is great. And I looked at the date, it was like two and a half years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Never going to see it. No. Never heard anything else since. Nope. And then uh, the last thing was Andor, and I was thinking about this a lot, in the fact that there was no editor strike right so it's just the writer strike and it's just the actor strike that, that obviously have ended now but they had to have shot i think they shot a bunch of it right they i think they shot like 60 percent of the show i could I be heard wrong that yeah so those episodes could have been started to be edited and just put together and you just plop in the scenes and plop in i mean you know but you just kind of insert the scenes and cut around that so i, I would assume they would have to shoot they have to continue shooting but then mm-hmm. The only thing that is hanging it up, if it did get pushed till 2025, which I hope it didn't, but the only thing that I can think of is that there are other engagement those actors have to be in, and they can't start shooting Andor immediately, so they have to wait three months, an additional three months, just say, uh, for something. But anyway. That's funny to hear you say that, because I have to take your, you're the editor, so I'm going to take your word for it, that that's how that could work, but that definitely sounds like an idea that I would try to come up with, like, ah, we could just start editing with 60% of the product, right? And you'd be like, no. No, that'd be great. The scripts are written, right? You just got to follow that. Hopefully. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so long as they don't continue to hand it down to new writers who give it to new writers who give it to new writers yeah um but luckily i feel like andor is being show run pretty well by tony gilroy so i exactly. don't think that is the case yep exactly i don't think there's a lot of like riffing on set necessarily yeah. all right well let's get into some of our topics of the day and uh we're gonna start with matt you wanted to talk about mando season four yes so as i alluded to that uh, talking about potential steel books of releasing three and four um, obviously not as a set, I guess, but uh, there's a lot of rumors now that, and I think <laughs> I think they're kind of dumb, that Mandalorian Season 4 will be a movie and not an actual season. Um, again, I want to see what you guys think of this. I have a lot of thoughts about it as well. Luke's shaking his head, and I... It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yes, I, I agree, because making, making a movie is sometimes more complicated than a show would be i could just i could just picture the communication breakdown where someone's talking about dave filoni's movie Mm -hmm. and that dave filoni is now the chief creative officer and dave filoni's making mando season four and the same characters are in it this is just water cooler talk that got mangled in a 50 person game of telephone and now some morons reporting it as news i'm pissed i think it's it's the only thing i can think of that's like maybe add any sort of validity to it especially if pedro pascal is doing the um, if he is Reed Richards in Fantastic Four, which I also hope he doesn't do that because I don't 
want those people to get stuck into. He's so old yeah. for that role, though. Yeah, he's got the great size. I, I don't think he's going to be. I think he's no. being clickbaited again, just like that, you were no, with Adam that Driver. Was, that was that was one of no Adam. What did Adam I, know, I, I heard this rumor yes. too. There there have been rumors. There about, have been rumors about like ten different actors. Yeah, and no, right. just affiliated Adam, with Star Wars, Adam Driver and Pedro Pascal. So, but but even then, I the, basically the thing is like obviously there was like rumors of Pedro Pascal being unhappy. I'm not sure if that's com- completely true. Nobody How is. Can Pedro Pascal be unhappy with this project. He has it made. This is the <laughs> easiest gig. That anyone could have, and he seems like a genuinely great guy who is like excited to do stuff. Yeah. But the only thing I can think of is that he's getting increasingly more. He's he's a movie star, right? And he's doing TV. So the, and even though it's just voice acting, you know that is a lot of voice. It's a lot of work still. And so I would imagine the only thing is like if they want if they needed to condense it um, instead of doing all of this, you know, all of this week weekly episode uh, release. Like I said, it, it takes like thirty six hours. Uh, 36 hours, 36 days, sorry. It was like 36 hours would be impressive. 38, <laughs> 36 days to film a Mandalorian episode. So the only thing I can think of is that they obviously are going to want to shorten this uh, for for his sake. With that being said, that's still a pretty lengthy shoot to do a movie. So I would imagine it would take a long, the exact same time to do that. And so that's the only reason I can even fathom in my head why it would be a movie versus a, an actual episodic show. But I mean, why would it not continue to be a show? It's, the dumbest idea, and like you said, Luke, I think it is, I, again, I don't know where the original source came from, but I, I started seeing that popping up over the internet a lot, well, I, I guess as this record like a month ago, but it was like, it's, it does irk me because it's like, Star Wars fans, there's no expectation set. If you're like, here's the Mandalorian show, and all of a sudden randomly going to wrap it up with a movie with no sort of context, it doesn't make a lick of sense, and it, yeah. it, it just sets a bad precedence going forward for any sort of show. Because it's be like, oh, Andor, you're used to Andor 12 episodes. Now this is only going to be a three-episode miniseries or something? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. So you need stability. Like a like a child, you need stability. You need to know <laughs> when your bedtime is. You need to know your parents are going to be there. Like We need to have a better understanding of, uh, of, of Star Wars, I think. I, I definitely don't buy into this rumor, um, but I was glad when you said that you wanted to talk about it because I think it is an interesting thought. Um Because if it were true, or if there was any sort of truth to it, it would be another example of Lucasfilm kind of learning all the wrong lessons again. Because like you said, like, I I, honestly, I feel like The Mandalorian is probably, like, the best TV show that they have, or the best best format that they have for a TV show. Besides Andor? No, I feel like even and Andor, <laughs> I think Andor, I think Andor and Ahsoka are better than Mandalorian, yeah. but I feel like the Mandalorian works best as a TV show better than those other shows. I feel like Andor and Ahsoka could have been a movie and they could have been really good. I think Kenobi and Book of Boba Fett should have been movies. Um, mm-hmm. I think Mandalorian is the only one where they kind of have it figured out a little bit of like how a TV show should work. And it's not my favorite format, but I, I think it is the one that they've kind of worked out the best. And I, I don't I mean, when you think about uh, the Star Wars movies, right, we always talk about like, what order do you show your kids these movies? And mm-hmm. do you start with the prequels? Do you start with the original trilogy? When do you show them Rogue One? And imagine that now for Mandalorian, if season four were made a movie yeah. and you're like, OK, you want to watch Mandalorian? You start with seasons one and two and then episodes five and six of Book of Boba Fett and then back to season three. And then there's a movie and then there's another Filoni movie yeah. that wraps all of this up together. It's like that is chaos. And it I is. just recently had an experience where I wanted to go back and rewatch the um, uh, the Punisher on Netflix, mm-hmm. and oh, I was that's tough. Yeah, I've gone through that before too. <laughs> and you went to the Punisher TV show, and I watched like half an episode, and I was like, "This is not what I thought it was." And then I did some digging, and I was like, "Oh, I wanted to watch Daredevil season two because that was when he was introduced, yeah. and that was mm-hmm. the, the the ones that I liked." Um, and, this, and so it's the same thing with this. Yeah. It's like, how are you going to go back and watch Mandalorian, especially when you're separated from that, and especially when we're you know we we talked about streaming a little bit earlier, but it's like when you're in this developmental phase still realistically streaming is relatively new just within this decade right and especially within the past three four years it's still so new so how are they making decisions like this the the defenders and daredevil and stuff that is now just completely moot basically and i mean i know they're like kind of revamping stuff but it's like it's still they 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 really took a gamble by introducing characters and other shows that you have to then then they got their own spinoff and it makes no sense. And the fact that it's like now like five years, six years separated from that, it's even more confusing. And the same thing's going to happen with Mandalorian and, and, and who knows where we're going to end up. But I also, Max, that's crazy. I disagree. I don't think Mandalorian 
has cracked it. I think Ahsoka and Andor, I think, go back to like uh, a good formula for for TV. Where I think maybe it's not maybe the formula, but like the way Mandalorian operates, where I think sometimes it, again it's just like creator and consumer uh, expectations of what the show is. You know, like we talked about our problems with Mandalorian season was season three, and that's the other thing that I can think of is just like for season four if they're just like well the stuff that we wanted to move towards didn't work out in the in the way like positively you yeah. know didn't re- received as well as it, as it as it should have been or would have been um that's the only other reason i can really think of but man i don't know yeah like you said you like andor and ahsoka better and i you know we all agree our yeah. favorite but. I, I like those shows better but i think uh some fair criticism are uh just the pacing issues that they have and i think that that's just uh consequence of them being tv shows and i think if they were made mm-hmm. movies they would work and maybe they'd be better maybe they wouldn't i don't know but i don't think mandalorian would be better by being made a, a movie yeah um, yeah I, I i don't know i don't know if it would or not it's just it, it, the the in, the reason i think mando works as a show is that it's it's just instant gratification after every episode yeah and so i think that is a movie format though not really a show right you the show format is over arced of a couple episodes in the whole arc um so i feel like in that regard, Mando could work in a movie, but like you said, it's chaos for what they set up. It makes it makes no logistical sense. Yeah, that's true. I also feel like from a meta perspective, though, all of this is just coming from a perspective where the streaming wars are kind of at an all-time high and yes. everyone's losing money. And they're like, all right, we need to make money somehow. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, well, let's release seasons one and two on DVD so that people buy it. We can make a couple bucks that way. And yeah. I don't know, maybe we release season four as a movie. Yeah. Get, get some box office returns or something like that. I mean, they uh, what was it? Ahsoka episode four, they had a theatrical release for. So, yeah. Maybe they could do something like that. I don't know. I w- we we would have seen Ahsoka in theaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, go listen to our Ahsoka, uh, <laughs> I think, review when we realized there was one way closer than we thought. Or Luke said he would travel to New York for it. And we were like, I think there's one in Chicago, which is not that far. Well, didn't he say he would, you would drive up to 12 hours? And we're like, well, New York's eight hours away. <laughs> and then yeah. Something I, like that. I was, uh, I was riding the Ahsoka high a little too hard. <laughs> 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 okay anyway i think that's all mandalorian season four all speculation right, yes. uh luke what did you have excuse me for your your topic oh uh, yes <laughs> um, also real quick should we not we should probably introduce this segment the this episode of what we're doing today right I'll, we, we I'll just kind of run into it i'll introduce the topic because just various I'll, topics i'll yeah. introduce the segment because it was presented to me as like a wild card we each bring in a topic that the other two won't know about because we're r- rapidly running out of ideas for full length episodes. And so oh, we decided to just get that. <laughs> smaller ideas that we could talk about for like 10, 15, 20 minutes. And we each bring one and then that'll be a good episode format. And so originally we were going to each bring in our own idea and it would be like a wild card. And mm-hmm. No one knows what it is. So, I started running with that, and I prepared... Well, real quick, to be clear, that was not how it was explained. That was how you understood it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do this a lot. This is just this so episode. I brought four ideas to talk about, and oh, we can yeah. take our pick. I was going to go with uh, right. the vibe. Um, Star Wars characters, if they were members of the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers when they beat the <laughs> Warriors after being down 3-1 <laughs> in the NBA Finals. Okay. The engineering differences between a B-Wing and all of the other ships in the Rebel Alliance, such that the B-Wing has a gyroscopic cockpit, and whether that is feasible to add to any other ship, and whether it's worth it. The operational efficiency of Chick-fil-A, which I don't know how to relate to Star Wars, but I feel like it's worth talking about. (laughs) Or Keanu Mundi is a dickhead, and why? I think Keanu Mundi is a dickhead. It was perfect because it literally looks like a penis. It does, and... They just ran. All right, so let's talk about that one because yeah. I've mentioned before that Keanu Mundi is the worst. <laughs> There's a Cavs fan right now going like, "No!" <laughs> All right, you want to talk about the Cavs? No, 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 no. <laughs> Keanu Mundi, Keanu Mundi. Because yes, you have mentioned before how you don't like him inexplicably. Um, so go I do want to get to those other now. topics in other episodes, though. The, all right, Keanu Mundi's design, the Syrian design, is not bad, but it's definitely the worst of any Star Wars alien design. Like, something has to be the bottom of the barrel, Mm -hmm. and I don't think you can make an argument for anything beside this. That's like a V1? (laughs) Yeah, he's just normal, white guy skin color, 
with a tall head. Like, no <laughs> fun appendages or horns and or like, scales. No, like, basically facially hair that grows out of wherever. Like, he, can you imagine, have we seen his species with hair? Um, he has hair. Yeah, he has a little he ponytail does. on yes. Yeah, he has as, hair. As I'm saying that, I'm thinking of the action And figure. I've seen art with female Syrians. It's just not that interesting, yeah. which, I don't know. It, it's not, I don't hate it. I hate Kiari Mundi. I don't hate the design of C- of Syrians, but I do think it's the worst design of any Star Wars alien because something has to be. George Lucas just saw cone heads and he was like, that's a good idea. That's exactly <laughs> what happened, I feel like. Yeah. And like, he, yeah, it's it's one of what? those things where like you are what you eat, but he is just like, he is what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> when did cone heads come out? Uh, oof, 1987. Ooh. Six. Mm, nope. It was our birth year, Matthew. 1993. 1993. <gasps> That's crazy. Before but it was Menace. based on a SNL skit, so maybe it that was, was maybe that was when that was. Who knows? I'm not going to look that up. I say who knows. I could know, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> We're not going to know. Um, and then I would like to go into every line that Kiari Mundi has, which is only four All because right. he's not in them that much. But each one, he's just the worst. So in The Phantom Menace, he says, the Sith have been extinct for a millennia. That didn't age well. <laughs> Screw you, Keati Mundi. And that, that's basically how I feel about every single thing he says. He also tells Anakin, your thoughts dwell on your mother. <laughs> Fuck you, Keati Mundi. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> I am a nine-year-old boy, and I've just been uprooted from my entire existence. He says in... Who had no father. My mother was literally the only person in this galaxy. Mm-hmm. In Attack of the Clones, he tells Padme, he's a political idealist, not a murderer. <laughs> That didn't age well. I like to think he at least apologized to Padme for such a massively stupid thing to say. And then his most famous line in Revenge of the Sith, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? And yeah, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees, Kiati Mundi? Do you want to go help or are you just trying to pawn this off? The whole galaxy's at war. There's a droid attack on countless other planets. Most of them don't have an army of Wookiees. Why are you so worried about this one? Ugh. Man, you, Keanu, I, honestly, as you say those lines, I, I'm getting more on your side, Luke. Like, I would say, like, Keanu Mundi is whatever as a character. He's always in my, you know, he's always, like, prevalent just because he has. Hang on. My cat is currently taking a shit. She's, <laughs> she's scratching the wall of the inside of her litter box. Oh, that's what's happening? Yeah, I figured I'd wait. Because I, I think in the last, last episode, there's. In the holiday special, there's like the food gets released or whatever. Oh, I forgot about that. And yeah. so, I'm just, I was, so I was just figured I'd uh, wait a second. Except that was, wasn't that Lauren who did that? Because when she did that, I like waved at her. I was like, what the hell are you doing? We're recording. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you waved at her. Um, I think we're... S- <laughs> no, she does this for like 16 minutes. Okay, so I just... Oh, there, just she go, oh there she goes. I was kidding. Yeah, that's no, good. Anyway. Um, I'm starting to agree with you, Luke, with Caddy Mooney, because I feel like, and he is a whatever character, but he, I feel like he's very prevalent because especially when you're a kid and growing with the prequels, you're just like, oh, that's like a, that's an alien. Um, not nearly as cool as a Plo Koon and Kit Fisto, obviously. Or um, any other alien. Yes. Sure. Yes. Um, but you know what he reminds me of, especially with these lines, he reminds me of like a stuffy professor who is like teaching like an ethics class or like a global awareness class that is instead of actually trying to like teach you and make you learn, they're trying to sell you like a lifestyle. <laughs> and they think that like they know more than you, and that's exactly with every single line that he says in that context. I'm just like he feels like somebody that is tenured on the Jedi Council and will never go away. I feel like that's such a perfect way to describe where the Jedi were at that place in time, yes, though, right? Yeah. Because I forget who was talking about it now, but um, like the Jedi at that point had already fallen; they just didn't know about it. Like yeah. they were too far gone. The uh, Emperor Palpatine's plans were in place; he had them in his back pocket. And like clearly, all of those lines that you just said. Sounds like he's an undercover Sith. Like he's mm-hmm. delivering all yeah. lines that Palpatine wants someone in those situations to be saying. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's a really indicative character of where the Jedi Temple was or the Jedi Council was in that moment in time. Yeah. Wow. Who would have thought that would have been a productive conversation when you first mentioned it? I, it's because I brought the evidence. I do not have these feelings for no reason. He is the worst <laughs> by design. Yeah. Just imagine the notes that he has in that book about Chick fil A's efficiency. <laughs> Which you'll find out. <laughs> Unbelievable. Has <laughs> been to Chick Fil A. It's been a it's long awesome. time. Well, let us know if you want to hear about that because there is also another idea for episodes that we're, we've talked about in the past, uh, where instead of force for thought, we do more for thought, where we talk about something outside of Star Wars, other things that we care about or passionate about. 
We can I, talk about Chick-fil-A. We can talk about fast food. We already kind of roasted Burger King on uh, uh, some of our Ahsoka episodes, so oh. I feel like we can go back to that a little bit. I was going to say we could do Chick-fil-A for the next Star Wars show. Star Wars show. Um, that would be much better than Burger King. Yes, I eat Chick-fil-A sig- pretty consistently already. Significantly <laughs> more expensive, though, I was going to say, too, if you like. Um, that Burger King so. was surprisingly uncheap. It yeah. was, yeah. Especially once we started getting into like the number sixes and sevens. Yeah. Even that bacon Swiss, baby. That was um, probably the best one, though. That, anyway. one, that one was worth the money. Um, all right. Well, and then to, to round out uh, the topics that we had brought to today's conversation, this is the, the first episode, mainline episode, I forget what we just said, of the new year. So I wanted to talk about some Star Wars resolutions and see if you guys had any. I know me personally, I would like to read some more of the books. We talk about that. I like the comics because they're a lot easier to read. Pictures are fun. Uh, and I struggle to read actual books sometimes. So my goal is to read at least four Star Wars books this year. It's a good goal. I, you know, I would like to also begin reading some Star Wars books. I think, you know, obviously we we have started this podcast because we love Star Wars. It's funny. Uh, I don't think we've talked about this necessarily before, but like we had this idea for this podcast like years before we like a, two years before we started. No, a year to the day when we actually were like sat down and talked about it uh, because I think Mandalorian just ended or something. Um, and we all were texting about it and we're like, there's nobody to listen to that we really would like, like to go to, or the three of us always talk about star Wars. Um, and so we wanted to become that. And then we just kind of forgot about it. I think I went to grad school and then, um, you know, I think what, what ended Mandalorian season three ended. And then we were like, Oh, we should do we should three. do that. We started, I think we started we, right towards the end of Mandalorian season three. You yeah, know? because we, that was when we when we actually started though. Yep. Um, we we started talking about this a long time ago. I think it oh, might have been Andor. the end of. Uh, was it, no, I think it was Mandalorian season. Or actually, I think it was Book of Boba Fett because I remember the reason it came up was because Matt came over. We were watching these episodes together, and then afterwards oh, we were yes. like, "Let's like look up on YouTube like people's reactions and reviews of these episodes." And like uh, we have an ongoing joke on our podcast, like, "Oh, this is oddly reminiscent of," and then we just fill it in with like something that is like obviously trying to invoke. Yes, and that was basically all we were finding on YouTube too. And like every single person we were watching, we were just like, "But they were." I, I know, I know more than this person, and yes. it was very infuriating to try to listen and to they them were, explain something. They were serious about it though. Well, the reminiscent yeah. of. They're like, the dark saber is reminiscent of the similarly named lightsaber that Luke Skywalker <laughs> used. Yeah, literally. That was, like, that was the type of stuff that yeah. they were saying. And we were just like, yeah, we know that. I thought this was going to be like deep cut Easter eggs or something. Yeah, or at least like having fun explaining something stupid. Like even like I feel like most of the things I say are dumb, but at least hopefully someone has fun listening to them. Yeah, we're a fun podcast. Yeah. That's why I could not emphasize enough. We are not journalists. We are not breaking news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But we will give you medium hot takes. Never, ever in your life, listener, walk up to somebody and say, well, I heard someone say on a podcast. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, always a smart thing to say. Um, but, you know, going, you know, di- uh, starting this podcast, I think, you know, I, we've always loved Star Wars. I've always loved Star Wars. But being able to do this stuff, it's been really fun to dive into that lore even more. So I feel like starting to read those books, whether it's the higher public or, or not, I think that's my goal, too, is kind of start reading um, a bit more Star Wars books, and I think getting more in, a little bit more ingrained to that uh, that nerdy culture and stuff too. Uh, you know, eventually, I just feel like we'll all probably jo- join the five hundred first because it's, how will we not at this point? But we'll see. That's my resolution. I think we're up to me then, and I don't want to brag, but uh, <laughs> you were just waiting for me to shut up so you could start. I knew it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I was thinking about my resolution and how I've already completed it because I wanted to make a. YouTube video synopsis of one of the Star Wars stories I read. Boom! January 2nd. It released. (laughs) I'm already done for the year. It released. You made it in 2023. That's not a resolution for 24. I wanted to release one in 2024, and we nailed it. (laughs) Catch me in 2025. Damn. I guess we will. And and check out my Rogue One on Star Wars Legacy. It's okay. And what? The, the series. The series, yes. Oh, okay. Not the oh, Rogue One. The <laughs> Rogue One, yes. The <laughs> Force <laughs> of Thought is always worth listening to. Yeah, yeah. You, did, you did a good job, my friend. <laughs> it's like, well, you're kind of cutting a short there, man. Yeah. You're um, telling people we're running out of ideas. You're saying that our <laughs> stuff's average. We're going to be around for a long time, folks. Don't listen to this naysayer. Yeah. I, I will be covering a comic series about once a year. So, I mean, we got the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then I think, like we talked about, we're going to try to get video in and get a merch store up as well is our kind of goal for yeah. at least our, our goals for the podcast internally that no one really needs to know about. But yeah, you can maybe some buy, buy a shirt that says 
this mask feels like my real skin. Maybe you <laughs> could get Which is a, a quote from Luke Taylor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can get, uh, which yeah, you have to get the ingrained with uh, maybe a Sea of Sammy shirt or uh, maybe release the bib cut. Or maybe we will start up a set up that Patreon so you can listen to the bib, the bib cut rant. <laughs> it's a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> yeah. All right, sounds good. Well, um, that brings us to the comment section. Luke, I think you had a comment that you wanted to talk about. Uh, yes, Jake from Ohio reached out to us and mentioned that I had a brain fart in the last, I forget when, uh, a couple weeks ago, when I was talking about the bartender from the Book of Boba Fett. I referred to him as a Nikto. He is indeed a weak way. I also caught it uh, after listening to it, and it was killing me, and I'm glad that our listeners are listening so intently that they also notice because I do really try to minimize those errors and I'm glad to that I'm glad to know that people are keeping me on my toes. You're talking about the bartender from Freetown? Yeah. Yeah. It was funny Did because... I not say that clearly? Did I make another mistake no, I just, talking no, about it no. just now? You said it right. I wanted I would, to make I sure lose it. I wanted to make sure I knew who I was thinking in my head. But I wanted to point that out because I thought that was hilarious. Luke texted us uh right after our episode aired and he listened to it and he was like, Oh man, I messed it up and then like the next day Luke got this comment, and he was like, I know I messed it up. Yeah, that was heartbreaking. But keep me on my toes. I welcome those kind of feedbacks. So that's a resolution. Get your, just keep on your toes. Yeah. Man, I'm really feeling like I forgot to say something. I feel like I had another part of that resolution or something. I'm going to listen back to this episode and kick myself. And I don't know what it is. Don't wait for me. <laughs> well, if you if you think of it, you can add it as a force for thought, unless somebody else has a force for thought. I'm sure some of, someone does. <laughs> I do. I was. Uh, this is a fun behind the scenes kind of thing. Um, during the creation of the Clone Wars TV series, uh, well, the movie first. Um, George Lucas has talked before about how he wanted to include uh, comic characters from the Legends. Well, it wasn't Legends then, but from the comic series, there was a clone named Alpha, and he was a. Uh, a cool clone, kind of a fan favorite, and George wanted to include him in the movie, but he decided against it and renamed him Captain Rex because of the alliteration that would have been far too present with Ahsoka and Anakin and R2 and Alpha. He wanted to switch it up more, which mm. also brings up mm -hmm. a fun phonics question of what is alliteration? Does R2 qualify as the A sound or is it an R sound? But it's definitely like... The same vowel, ah, Cause R, it's, uh... but it's spelled just R, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. I would not count that, but I'm sure that is probably correct. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. To I, me think, it... I think it is correct, but... Yeah, to me that doesn't... You, you have to like almost say that aloud, because when yeah. you're just reading it, like Ahsoka and Anakin and R2-D2, and you're like, well, that one's not an A. You're like, well, well yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it is weird. That is so funny. I would not necessarily have caught that but yeah the anakin and ahsoka and the alpha would be a lot that's like in the um duel of the fates when you have a uh, rafe and then a ray i yeah. mean that's like yeah that was hard for you for me to follow when you were just talking about it. yeah that is like writers 101 to be like oh every character should be a different like letter at least or i mean i guess ahsoka and anakin but like it's interesting hmm. yeah Ahsoka is too good of a name not to use, I think. I remember you taught me that. I had a, a script oh, that yeah. I sent for you one time, and you were like, yeah, it was really good, except you have like three characters whose names like on paper look the same, and that yeah. should be different. It was the M's. I forget what it was, but yeah, it was something like that. And yeah. it's hard not to take Matt's advice on this, because for those of you who don't know, he literally has a master's degree in screenwriting. So <laughs> That's true. But... So when he offered that advice to me, I thought I should take him up on it. <laughs> Other than that, that Thanks, script Maxwell. was gold, so fuck it, you. It was. It was really fun. <laughs> that and then the baby shark joke. I forgot. I, I Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> You're that. You're like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, if my original idea for a joke for this episode got canceled, then uh, we shouldn't talk about that on <laughs> pod either. <laughs> yeah. All right, sounds good. Well, let us know what you think. Uh, let us know if you want to see us do more episodes like this. Let us know if you have any comments. Feel free to reach out to us, um, and maybe we can talk about it on pod. You can reach out to us on social media, um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and you can email us at forceforthought at gmail.com. Yeah, and Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you're doing good, and yeah, let us know your Star Wars resolutions as well. See you, Sammy. Sammy.